I've been suffering through BPQ 32 for a while now, uh, but I did make some advancement. I've gone to like 15 or 20 web pages and get enough information to, to figure out what the hell's going on. It really is difficult with its uh, current state of documentation and using a Yahoo group for information, which drives me absolutely nuts. I got away from that stuff like, I don't know, 20 years ago. But I want to show you where I'm at. Again, this is our radio on this side of the house. This is our, our Yatesu right here. And we're connected to the Raspberry Pi on the other side of the house. And this is what I got set up, right? Right now. See, so I did a couple things. BBS is working. Uh, th there's a screen wrap here. There's no command entered. Uh, BBS is working. I got Telnet working, which I realize is not safe or practical, right? But for demonstration purposes, this is absolutely fine. And then I've got one Perl demo, right? So I just want to show really quickly that my little BBS that I just started putting together, my little Commodore motif, right? So here we go. I'm logged into my BBS. <clears throat> there, there are some commands I could run, I guess. I really haven't given it a whole lot of thought. BBS is not my, my primary function right now. I'll still show it working. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna log off of that. There's not, nothing really further to see on BBS, right? So now we're gonna tell that into the Raspberry Pi from uh, this control here, right? That created a, just a temporary account, just for testing. It's in a separate group. It doesn't really have a, a lot of permissions. An easy to remember password. Right, so there we are. I'm telling that it in. Now, an interesting thing. Which is which is kind of cool because I, I really could actually You really have to be careful about the commands you can type in, or you'll be waiting a while. It's not an ideal connection because it really is too strong because these radios are too close to each other. It does drop packets. What I really wanted to do was show this particular Perl script that I wrote really quickly. And the interesting thing about this is you can use INET to call the Perl script on a particular port. We'll see there's not much to this.
seeing a lot of packet rejection, especially during the day when I have the uh, <clears throat> when I have everything turned up. And here's a little Perl script I wrote, right? Now we could actually run this script because it's it's latched to a particular uh, TCP port, right? So let me exit out of here. Right, and we're back at the main. Now I could just type Perl demo to execute the script, and it will automatically pass my call sign as a parameter. You can see right there, my, my call sign got sent. And there it is, and you should just echo back whatever I type. Nothing special. But we were able to see that we used Perl to pull information about Perl. And it was executed over packet radio. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I could type exit to leave. This will take me back. You have to have a way to exit your Perl program, or you're just permanently stuck in there. There really is no way out. So <clears throat> there's many ways you could you know, exit out of the program. But yeah, it's up and up and running. This is BPQ. I'm trying to simplify it to the most simple way possible. You know, not everything's working yet. You can see my ports up right there. There is a chat. There is RMS. I'm not not really sure what it does, but it does connect to WinLink when I type RMS. <clears throat> and then it will unceremoniously disconnect me from WinLink. So I don't really know what that is. You know. Oh, and there it goes, it's disconnected, right? So, making progress, making progress. No help to the wonderful documentation online, but just slowly getting there. We'll, we'll call it right here. I think this is good enough. That's what I'm up to. On my Apple II, my first generation, you know, terminal node controller. There's my, uh, by the way, that's the modem that it usually runs on, that star uh, Prentice 103.32 acoustic coupler. So I think, I think this modem is, is probably as old as that one. Who knows? Thanks for watching.